Hi, my name is Dave Shimko, and I'm a Solutions Architect here at Amazon Web Services. In this video, we'll cover Amazon DocumentDB integration with Tableau Desktop. But first, I'll hand it over to my colleague Saurav to start us off. Thanks, Dave. My name is Saurav Biswas. I'm a Specialist Solutions Architect here at Amazon Web Services, and I work with the Amazon DocumentDB service. In today's session, we are going to give you a brief overview of DocumentDB as a service and its value proposition. This will be followed by a session where Dave will be taking you through the process of integrating Tableau Desktop with Amazon DocumentDB using the JDBC driver. He will also give you a brief demo of the process he's just going to describe. Coming to Amazon DocumentDB, it is a fully managed, highly scalable document data store that is compatible with MongoDB APIs. Now let's break that down. Unlike traditional on-prem software management and operations, this service comes fully managed. That is the hardware and the software and the patching are done by AWS for you. When we discuss the architecture in the next slide, we are going to discuss more about the scalability, but just so that you know, we are a highly scalable, both in the compute and the storage layer, and we can achieve that in a very short amount of time because of the architecture of separation of compute and storage. And finally, we are MongoDB API compatible. That means if you have applications that use MongoDB tools and drivers, you can migrate them easily over to Amazon DocumentDB. Having said that, there might be some operators that are not yet supported by DocumentDB. And in those cases, we are constantly getting feedback from our customers on the operators they use in the field. And based on that, we are constantly adding new features to our service as well. So do get in touch with us if you do not find the operator you're looking for in DocumentDB. Coming to the architecture of the Amazon DocumentDB, one thing to keep in mind is we built a brand new service in 2019. And the philosophy behind that was when you create a cloud native database, it should not inherit the challenges of a monolithic architecture. Now in monolithic architectures, whenever you have to scale your compute, that is your CPU or your memory or your storage, it will typically involve a lot of operations, whereas you have to copy the whole stack over in order to scale up. With DocumentDB, we have a decoupling of storage and compute. The compute layer, where there are one or more instances, and the instances primarily have CPU and compute memory. And then they interact with the storage layer, which is a self-healing distributed storage volume, where each copy of data that you write gets distributed into three availability zones. And in each availability zone, we again copy the data twice. So six total copies across three availability zones, highly durable. The compute layer, on the other hand, takes care of compute intensive tasks, like it will take care of query processing, it will take care of caching, etc., And it interacts with the storage layer as and when required. One thing to note here also is that the backups that we have at DocumentDB does not impact any compute resources. That's a great gain for especially high storage systems and where you have to take frequent backups. You do not have to size it for your backup requirements. You have to only reset the retention period of your backups. Keep in mind, you can also take uh, manual snapshots if that is the requirement. Hopefully that will give you a decent overview of what Amazon DocumentDB is. Now I'll hand it over to Dev to carry on with the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Dev. Over to you. Thanks, Saurav. The key tool to help us integrate DocumentDB and business intelligence tools like Tableau Desktop is the Amazon DocumentDB JDBC driver. SQL is a standard for data and analytics and one of the most popular languages among data engineers and data analysts. The JDBC driver provides a SQL interface that allows SQL-based tools to easily access JSON data stored in DocumentDB. With this driver, you can visualize JSON data with business intelligence tools and run SQL queries on JSON data with developer tools like DB Visualizer. To connect to DocumentDB from Tableau Desktop, you must download and install the DocumentDB JDBC driver and the DocumentDB Tableau connector. 
And you can see an example of both files listed in the asset section of the version 1.4.5 release shown here. Download both of those files and copy them to these directories. Once that is complete, you'll be able to see that Amazon Document DB is now available as one of the installed connectors. And here's an example of what the JDBC driver configuration looks like. The General tab contains the main connectivity information to connect to the cluster. And under the Advanced tab, there are some additional options. Probably the most important setting to call out here is the scan method. As mentioned before, SQL is a standard for many data and analytics tools like Tableau. But we need a way to translate the schemaless JSON structure in Document DB to a SQL table structure that can be used by Tableau. The JDBC driver performs automatic schema discovery, mapping collections to tables, documents to rows, and fields to columns. Another setting to mention under the Advanced tab is enabling the SSH tunnel. Document DB is a VPC only service. These clusters can be accessed directly by EC2 instances or other AWS services that are deployed in the same VPC. But if you need to access your Document DB cluster from your local machine, and you don't have network connectivity set up through a VPN or Direct Connect, then you'll need to create an SSH tunnel to an EC2 instance. But for our purposes today, we'll keep to a simpler scenario with Tableau Desktop installed in an EC2 instance in the same VPC as our Document TV cluster. Now let's move on to the demo. To start us off, I've already created the EC2 instance and installed Tableau Desktop. I've also added the JDBC driver, and you can see the document DB is available as an additional connector. Under the general tab, we've got the main connectivity information. I'll go ahead and add the password. And under the advanced tab, we can focus in on the scan method and the scan limit. With the default settings, the driver is gonna randomly select a thousand documents within the collection to determine the schema. But under the scan method, there's a couple of additional options available. The driver could sample the documents by ID, both in the forward and the reverse direction, or it could sample all of the documents to determine that schema. Our collection is small, there's only 12 items, so the defaults will work. Now let's take a look at the schema that gets generated by the driver. And here's our demo database. And we've got one collection in the database and that's photographers. But you can see here that four SQL tables get created. To understand how these get created, let's take a look at our source data. Switching over to the source data, you can see that we've got our list of photographers and some basic information about each. The name and the birth date, these are simple fields. So these will get mapped to columns within the main table. But for complex fields, things that are arrays or sub-documents, these are gonna get mapped to virtual tables within our schema. So location, coordinates, subjects, these are gonna become virtual tables within our schema. And that's what we see here. Our collection photographers becomes the main table and we've got virtual tables for location, location coordinates, and then also subjects. So let's pull these tables into our data model to take a closer look. Now we've got the photographer's table. We'll pull in information from this table. And you can see that name and birth date get mapped to columns. And then the IDs of the documents get mapped to photographer's ID. Now say we want to create a map of the photographer's locations across the US. So we're gonna need to pull in some additional information into our data model, starting with the coordinates, And we'll pull information back for this virtual table. And you can see that the latitude and longitude get mapped to columns within this table. But also the photographer's ID gets added as well. This gets projected into this virtual table from our main table to maintain that foreign key relationship. And let's say we want to add the photographer's subjects to our data model as well. We can use this in the map. And you can see that this virtual table follows the same pattern. If we pull back some data, the subjects get added as a column and that photographer's ID gets projected into this table as well. 
Now we have all the data that we need to create our map. So let's get started on that. To start, we'll just need the latitude and longitude information. So we'll go ahead and add that to the columns and the rows. And we just need the dimension. And now you can see that our 12 data points are displayed on the map here. Now say we wanted to add a filter to filter our photographers by their subject focus areas, we can do that as well by adding the subjects value into our filter. And we'll include all of the options in the filter. And we'll go ahead and display this on the map. And we can deselect all of the options here and select only the ones that we're interested in, say maybe automotive, beaches, and city life. And here, now the map is only displaying a subset of photographers just for with these selections. And if we hover over these data points, we can see that we're just displaying location information. If we want to add more data to that, we can by pulling from our data model. We can pull in the photographer's name. And to help us validate the filter, we can also add their focus subject areas. And now if we hover over these data points, we can see that we've got the name and their focus areas, so beaches, automotive, and then city life for these two data points. So we can validate that our filter is working correctly. To learn more, take a look at the following resources and please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.